T.W. You mad. F. T. W. Broadcasting here for the win. I've got my F. T. W. Crew on board for this high elo featured match. As you can see, we're five minutes in because that's just the way that featured matches work right now. It's pretty much impossible. <laughs> we just spent 40 minutes trying to find a game that was at the beginning and it just ain't going to happen. Regardless, I've got MBD on board with me as well as KOT. MBD, tell me about the red team. There's already a kill here. What the hell happened? Well, I'm um, using my excellent detective skills. I have determined that Shivana tried a level 2 gank and ran into the Nautilus in the jungle. So, that uh, was unfortunate for her. As you can see, Annie has the red buff. That's how I determined that. Moving on up to the top, we have OSN Trinity as the top wick. In the jungle, as I said earlier, we have KWR as Nautilus trying another gank up top. In the mid, we have that Annie I was telling, and K Alex. And so let's look at what's going on up top here. Oh, yeah. that is a no oh, very just nice, a nice hook. A little hot gank there, yeah. The dredge line connected, ignite. I mean, Nautilus. really, Kenan just didn't have a chance. It was Not just great oh, gank. I'm trying to. I'm talking over you here. Not was so deadly in that jungle. That hook is. I love that hook. Really, really nice. And then down at the bottom, as the 80 ranged carry, we have ZZTIZZ playing Graves and Sean Sean Two as a John Corky. Woo! Ooh, that was uh, aggressive by Corky. That is what he's known for, though. Oh, and uh, I will head right on over to the King of Town to describe what's going on with that blue team. On the blue team, we have, uh, continuing where you left off in the bottom right, we have a uh, Derek. Looks like Derek? I don't know. People people spell things weird. They should use words. We have Derek playing as Soraka. VTIM, four letters and numbers, <laughs> playing as Corky. The uh, Soraka Corky combo. Deadly, deadly, deadly. Corky gets that sustain he needs to play very aggressively. Always happy to see that. We have a uh, Tango Twisted Fate. Spot Shot 77 playing in the mid against Annie. Unfortunately for him, she did get that uh, early kill on uh, on Shivana. So she's going to be ahead a little bit. That's going to make things rough for him. In the jungle, we have Chris. Very original name, playing Shivana, Doing her job, clearing the jungle. And then up top, we have Extreme Killa. Killa, not killer. That would be offensive. Uh, playing as, um, I can't even talk right now. Playing as, uh, <laughs> <laughs> playing as Cannon against the top wick, which should be fun for everybody. Top wick, obviously very difficult to push out of the lane. And, uh, as you said earlier, looks like, uh, they had that fail gank mid. We, we deduced that via our excellent reductive logic. Yes, and, and while, while that whole, uh, spiel was going on, we did see the Soraka got killed by the Nautilus. But uh, I think we failed to miss it. I don't know if they will caught it on camera there. there. I assume it was some epic hook right by the tower. you got to watch out for that for him. He's just so tanky. that, he, And with that hook, he can really just go where he pleases Mundo style. He did. I did not catch it because I was uh, following the introductions. It looks like Warwick connected with that ultimate. Cannon pulling back immediately once the Nautilus has been spotted. Cannon does have a ward here in the river, though. So he's well aware that this Nautilus is chilling in the bushes. Yeah, and now he just he gave kind of gave away that he was aware there by uh, popping his W, but that's okay. Not also just go about out the tri bush. He's being very very persistent. That's what you see in these high elo is the persistent jungler. Here comes the TF teleporting in with that ultimate, connecting with Nautilus. A little, more or less, a little bit of harass. Was this a mistake by the TF to come in? If he doesn't turn around and run away, he could. I don't know. Are they trying to turn this around? I really can't tell who's got the advantage right now. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what Ooh, his bottom overall lane Jana just there. got took out by Corky there. Um, and it was a really effective gank here. We got Corky plus the Shivana. Nice jungle gank here. Double buff Shivana. So dangerous. Both players from the red team go down in that gank. Super effective. Nice job, Shivana. Yeah, Shivana very, very tanky. Especially with uh, that Soraka there to heal her up, give her that extra armor. She took like probably three or four tower shots there. No problem. One of the nice things about lane with Soraka, or just having a Soraka on your team, is you can be very aggressive like that. Get behind the towers, things that would normally get you killed. You walk away with a 30 or HP. You're good to go. Go back about, back about your business. Yeah, they, those, are, those heals are big. They're not, they don't come as quickly as you would like. The cooldown is a little long, but they are, they are big and they are delicious. Can you describe heals as delicious? Is that good? I think you Does can. That work? I think you can. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing it. I did it. It's done. Very nice. So, but with this jungle matchup, let me ask you guys. You guys are the analysis experts. Nautilus versus Shivana. You see both get uh, played a lot in high elo play. Which do you think is stronger? And maybe maybe there's not a correct answer there, but maybe each one is better at different things? 
that's usually the case when you're comparing two champions. It really depends on the rest of the comp, but I will say in general, uh, because Nautilus has both a, a, a gap closer he can use on the terrain and or it doubles as a hook, um, you know, he's really good. People don't have to be quite as out of position to be really vulnerable to that jungle gank. Nautilus is typically, he's, he's got a pretty fast clear, and he's able to exert a lot of pressure. He's very tanky, he's beefy, he can get in the, get in the business, and, uh, you know, he, he's really scary when he's on the enemy team. You really need to have a lot of a map, map awareness and know where he's at, um, or you could be in a lot of trouble. Speaking of which, you got Annie coming down the river. Is getting spotted by that Vision Ward though, so that Vision Ward could pay off by saving both of them. So many V pings there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, on to the uh, Nautilus Shivana question. As we see uh, Warwick just get annihilated by Shivana and Kennen up top, uh, Shivana does more damage. Both of them very tough. There's, dude, the junglers are doing their job this game as Nautilus gets another kill down there. Uh, Shivana and Nautilus both very, very tanky. Shivana does more damage, Nautilus more disruptive. Gonna completely agree with that. I guess, can we say that one is better at ganking than the other? Because I would say that they both have equal uh, ganking potential. I, I would agree with that, and uh, nice work by the purple team grabbing up the uh, the dragon after dealing with that Sorokin and knowing that Warwick up top is gone, knowing they basically have can take this dragon uncontested. There's that pink top there, there so they know there are no wards, so free dragon. What would you rather have at this point, the 11 minute mark? Would you rather have the dragon or would you rather have uh, a tower? Uh, because the top tower went down at the same time, Cannon decided to press their advantage. I, I would rather have the dragon because it, that includes knowledge of when the dragon's coming back. Well, not only that, but uh, the tower, taking out that top tower gives Warwick more room to farm. He's going to be harder to gank now because that top tower's down. The creeps can push up farther. Um, so, uh, yeah, you find a lot of times uh, in these higher elo matches, taking that first tower early is not always advantageous. You do get the money, obviously, and that's always a nice bit. But you also, like I said earlier, you give uh, Warwick some room to uh, basically, uh, you know, be safe from ganks while he's farming. Fair enough. Sneaky Shivani. She wants to go in. She wants to go in. I think she just snuck oh. in there successfully. Very nice. <laughs> just in time, that ward was getting dropped there. Oh my! Nice teleport there from the TF, taking that, uh, taking that poor Jana down. Jana didn't have a chance. You know, doing the right thing there, putting the ward down just in time, and really knowing the timing of the next Shivana gank. Great anticipation. It just didn't work out. I mean, nothing she could do about that teleport. Well, yeah, she she did well. She got her uh, ultimate off, and she was gonna get away, but you know, g global ultimate, a bit of a game changer, or nearly global ultimate, I guess. It's global. Remember, remember when he could just teleport like across the map as his like. You remember w? when that wasn't his ultimate? Yeah. Yeah, it was just his regular move. <laughs> it was just something he could do. He also that had couldn't the double possibly gold be OP. Card bug. <laughs> oh, that the was... double gold card, classic. Back if in you the kids day. don't remember any of that, uh. Good for you, because that was painful. Oh man, there was some just really painful stuff between that and Sunfire stacking and just all of the ridiculousness. We're seeing um, some trading heads up action in, up top. Uh, Warwick and, well, all right, perfectly symmetrical violence. Everybody has half health and nobody's dead. Yeah, Very except good. for here comes Annie for uh, reverse Annie coming around to the back bushes. If this cannon gets caught, oh, he Annie does something. have the tippers. He smelled something. He's like, I gotta go. Gonna e on out here, lightning rush on out. Kennen very slippery. That lightning rush is uh, makes me so angry sometimes. Yeah, sometimes you know at low elo you see a lot of casted in vans. You know, basically for the same reason. He's just so slippery. He's not that dangerous. He is a big pub stomper, but uh, you know if you play against him right, he's not that dangerous. But he's so annoying because you can just never ever get a hold of him. Ooh, that was a nice flash nippers by Annie there. But oh, lightning rush away. It's Draw almost equivalent heal, to a nice. troll pull. Look at that flash attempt there, the ultimate attempt. He connected! Nautilus flash ultimated there to connect with that one to pick up that kill. Wow, that was bold, picking up that cannon. Maybe he got a little slash taunted by all the cannon escapes. Oh, he didn't... Well, I mean, he knew if he could get his ultimate off, uh, he was in good shape, and obviously ult <laughs> Nautilus has that lock-on ultimate, as they just kind of annihilate Soraka in the wrong place at the wrong time. It's, r it's rough to be Soraka all by yourself. Oh my, the banana hammock can only go so far. No, it's it's a powerful banana, but it's not everything. TF, kind of very oh, nice. Sean Sean also kind of out of position. Oh, nice uh, tornado there to pop up Shivana, and oh no, she's done for. Shivana so tanky. You just see how many tower shots she takes with it's just crazy. a Riggles landing. Would you say that Shivana is equally as tanky as uh, the Sad Mummy, or a little less? 
Um, it depends. Probably mid game she's e equally as tanky, depending on how you bu build her. Obviously, late game the mummy is just straight up tanky, and he will just uh, scale in that direction much harder. Right, but Abumu is is really more about control and and initiation. Shivana, and having the best ultimate in the game. Uh, yeah, and having the best ultimate in the game. Shivana still, you know, despite being able to build tanky and be tanky, still manages to do a very significant amount of damage. You know, once uh, once Abumu blows his ult, you can kind of ignore him to a certain degree. Uh, mm. But uh, you know, Shivana's a little. Shivana is always a threat. Shivana chilling in this triangle bush. He's being away. Warwick, Doesn't realize that Warwick's on the scent right now, and there's a Nautilus to follow. Warwick connecting with the ultimate. The dredge line barely misses. Here comes TF to support this. Some triangle bush action. It's 3v2 right now, but this Shivana's so low on health, but Shivana's not going to give up. It's that tankiness factor that we were talking about earlier. John is on the other side of the woods, unable to help, but here comes Annie. Oh, missing with the tippers there because of that clutch flash from TF, but it didn't save TF's life. Now it's a 5v1 chase down. Will Kinnon be slippery enough to get out this time? Oh, there's a, there's another dollar all popping him up, getting just uh, picked off by Warp, doing a nice job of uh, running and making sure his auto attacks continue to hit. A lot of uh, players, especially uh, you know lower elo players, <laughs> myself included, will not do that properly. It's a skill you want to look at to uh, l watch how you play and watch that. Run and auto attack back at the same time. You get the audio t auto attack, you run as your attack timer is resetting and you get another attack in there. It maximizes your auto attacks and thus maximizes your damage. Pro tips from a semi-pro. Semi. Semi-amateur. Semi-amateur. <laughs> a nice little tower exchange there. Uh, blue team still up on towers by two. They just they knew everything was going down down in the top lane, and it really was a good decision by this Soraka Corky combo. Just we're, we're, we're just deciding I'm gonna push my lane. I'm gonna get a tower out of this, despite the fact that my team is getting rocked in the top lane. Right, absolutely, and it takes it actually puts them ahead on gold right there. So there is that. At, um, you know, sometimes it's all about decision making and realizing that yeah, maybe you, maybe you want to run all the way across the map to maybe help your team, but. What will actually probably happen is that you'll trickle in at the last minute, and then you will also die. Isn't so. everything in this game decision making? I mean, uh, other. I mean, obviously, marine like micro can really help you out, but really, the decision making is really is what everything boils important. down to. Yes. Once you once you get at least the basic grasp of your character, and you're playing mid elo. If you're yes. face checking bushes that have all five all five of the op opposite team in there, it doesn't matter how uh, good I, your micro I, is or I how like, good your mechanics are. I like that. I, I just see a bush and I just want to put my face in it. It's, it's so tan tantalizing. Uh, bushes do smell and taste delicious. So, mm -hmm. uh, for what Just like heels. Just like heels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you maybe, go. Maybe so, a little oh, sexy. He brought it back, a callback, I believe they call that. Yes, very good. Thank you very much. We'll be here all week, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so red team, like we were talking about earlier, they knew the timing on the next dragon, but they've got all sorts of blue players in the midst. Blue deciding to pull back now, pinging the crap out of the Baron. Red team, you have a, you have colorblind mode on? Is that what's going on? I do have colorblind mode on. That's it's nice easier of you. for our viewers to understand who is who. This Soraka's in serious trouble getting ignited, flashing out of there. Very nice Soraka move. Yep, we've got we've got action in this woods here. Everyone's kind of running around. Actually, looks like the blue team is kind of poking towards Baron, trying to make a decision. Without Soraka, they might be okay, or they. Oh, it's the Baron trap, classic. Yeah, it looks baiting like they're posturing for an engage there, as opposed to you know actually going for the Baron. But it doesn't oh, look like it's. Cannon. <laughs> they throw they throw out their cannon and their corky out front. Like, look at me, look at me, free meal. And this Warwick came around from behind on the side bush, got caught. Well, I don't know if we can call it got caught out of position. Uh, maybe the Shivana felt like he, she, uh, he was out of position as he ran off immediately. Now Warwick's getting engaged. Do you think this Warwick's going to go down? I don't know what he keeps doing. He keeps running in that bad situation. Now the team fight is up as oh. Kenan all goes down. Tibbers is down. The Janna ult is down. TF cards are flying everywhere. Nautilus flashes up. We have Graves has been exhausted as Kenan goes down. Just oh. all sorts of craziness. This cleanup crew, this Corky Shivana combo could be disgusting on cleanup. Speaking of cleanup, there's TF with the teleport taking out Janna. Oh my. Shivana takes out Graves. Now they're going to be able to push this middle tower. No. Shivana's looking Baron. like, yeah, leading the charge. Go pick up the Baron. Not a. What do you think of that decision, KOT? Good timing. Pick it up. I think that's a great decision. They could either go and take that mid tower now while they all respawn, or they could take the Baron and push that tower anyway uh, with the Baron buff and have, you know have that around for a couple minutes. Maybe push that inhibitor tower, or uh, you know really do whatever they want. But at the end of the day, all the the 
besides the buff being worth several thousand gold worth of items. Well, it actually um, looks like it was a poor decision. They weren't quite beefy enough to take the Baron, just the three of them, only being level 13. Yeah, a little low level for it. They really needed their whole team there, and they didn't have it. Right, I mean, well, I think the decision making was generally sound, um, but probably just overestimated where they were in the game. Good Unfortunately, Cannon and Soraka execution. were in the base, right? Cannon and Soraka had to go back because they were so low on health. Well, Cannon uh, was, was killed, I believe, and Soraka uh, uh, walked yes. away. Right. At uh, uh, low health. Whatever. Yeah. It's, it, it's, I guess the tower was, was the to go back decision, to the base when you hindsight die. being what it is. <laughs> well, actually, I mean, I would have said the tower and King of Town is wrong. I'm right. Truly Clearly. the pro. Obviously. And it's been settled. Let's take a look at the overall numbers right now, because we're we're past the 20 minute mark. The teams are fairly even, nine to ten on kills. The gold is fairly even. Is there anybody in particular who's been farming, especially well, um, who's really pulling ahead in their build? Uh, you know, not particularly. You see, the AD carries about even, actually almost dead even, 142 to 143. Each of them with two kills, uh, graves with two deaths. Not that important um, so much in terms of the gold making more in the amount of gold you give when you die. Those streaks can really, uh, if you die with a streak, you can really give your uh, enemy team a big leg up. But uh, no, everybody's pretty much pretty much keeping up with one another uh, in terms of the farm. Uh, like you said, the gold is very even. The objectives are fairly even. This is really still anybody's game at this point. Lots of pings on the Baron here from the blue team. Are they gonna want? To, are they gonna try to go back, or maybe it's a slash talent Baron action? Yeah, this looks like definitely a Baron trap action. We saw them try to do it earlier, and uh, well, let's see what happens there. Well, oh, okay. So they were just counter warding. Ah, see, they just they took out the ward. It looks like it is a trap. It oh, is a trap. The ward shh, up on the high ground. Okay, shh, shh, shh. Look at that it's gonna happen. Is the Nautilus gonna go in? Oh, he's doing it. Oh, and wait. Annie, don't face check that bush, Annie. <laughs> okay, that's not whispering. <laughs> you gotta be quiet, or these players don't know what's going on. This is pretty close to live, what we're watching right now. We're only a couple minutes behind. Oh boy, it's that back and forth situation in the river. Does either Trading team have wards, like a proper engagement? Eating each other's wards there. Yeah. Yum, yum, yum. They, Your ward was tasty. Uh, and they, there's they Nautilus are. with the dredge line. And now Shivana jumps right into the middle of that red team, starting this engagement. This is going to be a huge team fight. Oh my! Red getting melted there with that cannon ultimate. Annie dies immediately. Did Tippers even get dropped? Double kill by cannon. Did you even see Tippers get dropped? Or did, she, or did Annie just get burst? No, I, I saw her go down. And Tippers is on cooldown. It just didn't last very long. There's that burst from the cannon ult, and uh, she got twisted faded up. Twisted faded. Pretty good. Yeah, I'd say so. This huge, huge burst there. Um, just a nice engage by uh, Shivana overall there. Gotta give her that. You know, I have to say, what I really think is going to work uh, in the advantage of the blue team here is that I feel like that their team scales a bit better towards the late game. Um, Corky basically turns into a hyper carry. You know, Shivana is obviously maintains uh, all the way through late game. She tends to scale a little bit better than say uh, Nautilus. Nautilus is very tanky and good for utility and disruption, but not so much on the damage. Um, Warwick tends to fall off late game, and and uh, you know Graves can keep up, but he's not a hyper carry like Corky. So, you know, I think as long as this blue team builds some magic resist to deal with Annie and all of her burst, I think they're gonna be just fine. Yeah, I. I would tend to agree with that. I think definitely the blue team has probably the stronger late, late game. But it, we'll we're, see if we're we can not get there to yet. That. <laughs> we're not there yet. But yeah. uh, team fights like that will uh, definitely make sure that we won't get there and the red team won't, won't win, anyways. Listen, we gotta clarify that. I mean, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not, certainly not, I'm not suggesting that you're writing off Graves here. Certainly he's not the uber, uber hyper carry, but Graves is a very strong carry, like uh, even mid game late oh, game. Yeah, so I'm not gonna write him off at all. Oh. He, he's just saying he doesn't hyper carry like Corky does, and right. I only half agree with that. Whew! Corky got burned there on the tower. Now this this Nautilus is essentially going balls deep. I think Soraka and uh, TF sort of need to pull back. If she, Well, here comes Shivana. Going to try to interrupt the situation. Shivana ult, ult jump there. Got interrupted by that tornado. Wow, blue team is getting completely melted. Shivana did pick up the kill on Warwick. Now Graves was able to finish off Soraka. This is amazing engagement. Kennen has been super, super effective in these team fights. Yeah, he's doing a great job of popping his ultimates at just the right time, 
flying right out, coming in with extra pokes. Shivana chasing down here. So it looked like it was the, the right and get. Ugh, the right engage for the red team there. Tibbers came down. There was a big explosion with Graves Ultimate, but in the end, it looks like it was even the uh, the tankiness of Shivana and just the positioning of Cannon really uh, pulled it off there. So they did the right they did right by taking out Corky nearly immediately, and I think that's the only thing that made the fight even. If Corky had stayed alive, obviously he would have just uh, ripped up the red team, as he is apt to do. Well, and you can't underestimate the amount of damage that Twisted Fate will put down. Twisted Fate, the other nice thing is he's got that stun on a very short cooldown. Granted, he does have to lock the, the gold card, but uh, he's able to put a lot of stuns down in the middle of these team fights. unlike Annie, who basically gets one, maybe two if it's a protracted team fight. But all in all, I feel like his utility is overall better. Yeah, I mean, Annie does have that issue. I mean, she certainly skills much better now than she did, say, a year ago, uh, where she was literally just a stun bot and she's certainly better now than she was but at, th at times she you know a lot of people call her uh baby's first ap carry and you know that's not all that's not necessarily derogatory but she can definitely get reduced to a stun bot if she doesn't farm as well as she would Shibana like getting very aggressive there uh is that gonna be a poke and then a pull out uh very good decision by the red team to, to move away Cannon was there in the flank, ready to move in, so good decision making. Not to mention Warwick was split off in the top lane. If Blue would have dove there, that might have been a good time to pull off a team fight. I feel like they would have come out ahead, but I, they, I guess they didn't know about Warwick's positioning in the top lane. And they yeah, were thinking about the Baron, they started it and then they changed their mind. And they see the red team all, this ward here is a great, I love this position for a ward. This one here and this one over here. They're just basically, they can see the red team completely. Yeah, that's very nice. I mean, we've said it before, and I'll say it again. Wards win games. If you know where your enemies, where your, uh, you know, the opposing team is at, uh, even if you know that there's just one member split off somewhere, that can really give you the confidence to make a good engage 4v5 or 3v2 or whatever it may be, uh, and really just give you the upper hand. Um, it can also, you know, prevent you from doing silly things like face checking bushes with all five of uh, your opponents in there. The bush. So that is it fun. Blue Team's objective just to burn this? It looks like they are going to actually try to pick up the Baron. Here's the entire red team going to attempt a steal. The flash in there from Nautilus. Oh my god, it was a steal! Red team got the steal. Can they take advantage? Nautilus got burned immediately. Red team needs to get their asses back and go back to the base and heal up and just relish in the fact that they got all that cash themselves and that nice little buff. Yeah, sacrificial steal by Nautilus. Very, very nice timing on the uh, the flash smite there. Very, You gotta love a good Baron steal. Gotta love it. Very nice work. Great work. Nautilus, I gotta say, Nautilus is worth his weight, even if it is a very, very high number uh, this game. With 6, 2, and 5, almost all those gank attempts have been effective. Uh, really, was that a fat joke? Be... It I think kind that was a of was. Joke. I guess. Is Nautilus no. a robot or something? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Nautilus, robots care. I'm pretty sure Nautilus I don't think he's is some a robot. kind of sea monster. So I probably wouldn't give him too hard of a time. He might already have weight issues, but uh, he's not the sort of guy that you want to make angry. He does wield a giant anchor, which uh, from experience I can tell you hurt. You do know that. You were a professional seaman. <laughs> <laughs> seaman. Classy guys here. It we're really is. This is a classy up. cast, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty then. So red teams regroup. They've got all five together. One thing I can give uh, give it to red team, they are sticking together as a team. They aren't overextending, and it's so easy to get in dive mode when you've got a Nautilus and you've got a uh, Warwick on your team. And this Warwick is making good decisions not to just hop in there and ultimate people unnecessarily. But dive mode, Nautilus, I get it. It's good, well, right? Like, uh, come on, guys. You got to give me some love here on these puns. Uh, you notice that, uh, that <laughs> Red Team lost a couple of team fights, and they started playing a little a little uh, more passively, which I think was the right move. They were able to take that Baron um, when Blue Team made the aggressive move towards it, which definitely benefits them. It puts them, you know, a little bit ahead. Uh, they're not ahead in gold, but having that, like I said, having that Baron buff is several thousand gold worth of, of stats in terms of the items you would have to buy to equal them. So, What's that number? Where'd you get that number from? That's that's curious. I'm curious to. Uh, somebody did the math on the forums. The stats you get from if you if you do the the math, the stats you get from the Baron buff are equivalent to uh, I believe about 3k worth of, of items. Right across the team. Uh, no, I think to I think in general. I mean, if you look at the Baron buff and the stats it gives, 
Ooh, Corky Ooh. got burned immediately by Graves. Huge engagement. Cannon connecting with the entire team, but unfortunately, TF was not here. TF was not here. That stun right on the tower, not going to work out. Oh my, Shivana went down as well. Now only uh, Soraka and TF stand. Oh my, getting caught way out of position. All five on the red team are up and running. KOT, is that mid inhib going to go down? It, it very likely will, if not the inhibitor, at least the inhibitor tower. And uh, that's that's the big advantage you get with the Baron buff, is that you can make those very aggressive under the tower moves, and uh, they pay off for you. They pay off in a big way, and now it looks like they are going to take both all these objectives, march all the way up middle, and now you know, you're going to have blue team in a spot where they're going to have to, they are going to have to play, play passively and defend if they have, uh, if they want any chance of turning this around. Yeah, wow. that was just a uh, that was a rough situation for the Corky there, sitting out of position, d did not want to be there, got hooked, got uh, Annie's Tibbered, and TF out of position, not able to come in, and basically turned it into a 4v5, and three of them go down, and obviously Twisted Fate and Soraka can't do anything about uh, stopping them, pushing right into the inhibitor. They actually were smart not to even try to stop him. As he, uh, Look at this he TF up top, man. Look at this TF using his ultimate lock and a gold card. Can he at least get a kill out of this terrible situation? Oh, um, that's probably not the person you want to try and get a kill on. <laughs> it isn't, but we just missed a kill there from Corky. Oh, no. Warwick chasing down the TF. I don't see how he's going to get away from Warwick. This is the situation that Warwick was created to <laughs> succeed in. Yes, indeed. Picking up that kill on TF. TF got a little greedy there. He was very close to securing that kill he oh, was boy. he was tilted by what what had just happened how he was out of position he's like no i'll, I'll redeem myself by coming in and getting a snag and a kill real quick oh oops. is this some even further tilt with here with this shivana and this soraka i mean their mid and hib just went down now the team is getting spread out you've got corky and cannon down picking up the dragon i can totally agree with that decision but shivana and soraka chilling in the woods up top i mean they could have got caught out of position there maybe it's that tilt factor it is. A lot of times you feel like team. you need to make something happen. Something really bad happened. You lost that team fight. You lost your inhibitor. Now you need to make something happen or the game is just going to slip away from you. And what you might actually be doing is making bad decision after bad decision and causing the game to slip away from you. Fair now, enough. keep in mind, Blue Team is still ahead on the gold count. Um, and they're actually now dead even for kills. Uh, you know, the game's not over. They just have to be wary about this middle lane. It's 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 easy for them to lose track if they get involved in a big standoff somewhere. It would be easy for them to lose track and have super creeps push in here and uh, make your life difficult. So you do have to worry about base defense, but uh, that's that's more about your your objectives and guarding your objectives as opposed to you know not being able to win team fights anymore. They're still they're still in a position they could very easily by winning the next team fight. Uh, you know, take the red team's uh, middle inhibitor and even things right up, actually maybe be ahead just because of how close the gold count is right now. Uh, I feel this game will, if anyone's game, it's very much going to be decided by the next team fight, just by the way uh, that these players are playing and the, the kind of morale you can sense by the, how they're moving around. Yes, yeah, and I, I will predict, well, who cares about prediction? Shivana's moving straight in. Shivana decides to engage there, breaking the team up a bit, but splitting Nautilus off in the front. Nautilus was the main focus, the main target, which is not what they wanted, allowing Graves to get a kill there on Kennen, and because they were sp so spread out, Kennen was un unable to do that massive team damage that uh, was so effective mid-game. Now Graves is picking up kills out the yin-yang. This TF got a little cleanup kill there on Warwick. Oh my. Now 3v1. It's actually really close. Tibbers securing that one. Now TF is the only one left standing. Double kill. Graves is starting to get very fed. This TF is probably going to die right now, and that's... that's that's probably going to be GG no re, folks. Yeah, that's the Acer. That was just a bad engage by Shivana. I think she thought the rest of her team was with her. Corky was a little too far behind. Cannon followed up like he should. Oftentimes, you know, it's better to f go with your team, even if their decision is bad, than not. Because at least yes. that way you're all, you're all committing to one decision, which is always better than, you know, splitting all up. But Corky was not there to follow up. Kennen just got annihilated and was not able to put out the damage he wanted to. Oof, there he goes again. Uh, and that was it. That was the ace. No, no reason not wow. to at that point. But I will say, you know, you tend to see that quite a bit with champions that have some kind of mobility like uh, Nocturne, Shivana, sometimes Corky if they're being extremely aggressive. They don't realize how long, just how long, it's going to take their team to follow up on that engage. And even though Shivana was able to get out of that alive, at least initially, she, nobody was able to, the rest of her team was not able to capitalize on any, any kind of 
uh, disruption or any of the damage that was really going on, and it really turned into just a very sloppy engage, uh, which you know became an ace. They didn't. I don't. She didn't have to do that. They weren't as behind as they felt like they were at that moment. That was sort of a desperation move, and I think it was that tilt factor. One thing, I really, my number one factor of the game is team coordination. And one thing I'd like to point out, the red team made the right decisions of when to dive. There was that mid-game situation when there was a team fight at that middle tower and it ended up being fairly even. Red team could have dove in that situation, but they decided not to. They waited till late game when they had the Baron buff and then they dived the middle tower and they only wanted to move in on situations where they really had the advantage. The number one clutch play in this game, in my opinion, definitely has to be that steal on the Baron from Nautilus, which I felt like that snowballed that more or less moral victory, which put the blue team on tilt. I mean, that was a huge play, uh, and the tilt factor was definitely apparent. I have to agree 100%. I, I, I really feel like I have to say that uh, if the Baron had gone the other way, then the match probably would have turned out with the opposite results. That was definitely the cornerstone moment in the game, and uh, you know, w w without the Keystone Baron buff there, the whole the whole arch fell, and it ended up with a red team victory. All right, fair enough. Thank you so much for watching, guys. We really appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, or I will punch a size your face for free. Playlist up in the top left hand corner. A link to our channel up in the top right hand corner. Thank you very much, guys. MBD and KOT for casting this game with me. And we'll see you in our next cast. F. T. W.